Hey, what's up guys, Nature. Uh, I wanted to do a quick little video today just on um, sampling inside of Bitwig, just a couple of ideas that you could use in different ways. Uh, this is gonna be a subtle example, but what I'm trying to do here is to create a sampler patch that sounds kind of like the emulator. I'm bringing this one up just for um, an example here. Uh, if you're using the Arturia one. So as far as I know, the, uh, the sample itself uh, on the emulator would import files at a lower bit rate and a lower sample rate. I think it was 32 kilohertz or something like that. And 12 bit files, um, something like the Fairlight, or I think was even less than that. Um, so there's a number of ways that you can do this. Uh, and now this is gonna give you a similar example, or a similar sound, um, is to just bring in your sample like this. And then to emulate that by using something like the bit eight module at the end to bring down your sample rate to wherever you want it to be, let's say 32 kilohertz. Um, the bit eight works slightly differently to some other bit crushes in that the, it doesn't have the actual bit rate that you can put in here. You can just dial up the quantization, which is essentially the same as reducing the bit rate. Okay, so now essentially you've got the signal being sort of reduced in quality here. Just gonna give you that retro feel, but the problem with this is that this is monophonic. Um, so essentially what you're doing is you're having the sum of all the audio from all the voices being channeled through the effects section of here and all of that being pushed through the bit eight. What I was wanting to do is because essentially this is applied as an effect now, I want this to be applied to the sample itself. But I also don't wanna to have to go and resample all of these samples at lower qualities to bring them in and then it's a real pain to do that. So the easier way that I do this is to rather just create a sample patch inside of Polygrid. And now because uh, we're working inside of Polygrid, anything that we're doing to this inside of this section here is gonna be applied per voice. Um, the problem though that you're gonna have here is that you don't actually have the effects like you have inside of the effects section. So you don't have the bit eight that you can just drag into a Polygrid. I wish they would actually add an effects container uh, that you could actually add effects per voice, which would be really cool, I think, but... Um, Let's quickly bring in a sampler. We don't even need to bring in the actual sampler um, module. You can just grab a sample, bring it in, it'll automatically create a sample module for you. And just make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see. Uh, we'll just remove the oscillator there. I'm gonna plug this into our ADSR. So now we've got the same thing. Currently this is monophonic though. Let's just click on that and we'll bring up the voice count, not the stack, sorry, the voice count. So we're gonna have 16 voices. We'll kind of turn this into a pad. So, so the other thing, uh, if we go back to that sample channel there is anything that we do to, to this, for example, let's say if we're gonna use a filter. That filter's being applied pre the bit reduction. And again, this would be simulating bit reduction on the outputs of the actual hardware synthesizer. We don't want that. We want to simulate the actual reduction of the waveform itself. And then you could run that through, say, uh, an analog style filter without getting that degradation on that. Um, so what we're doing here, essentially the same patch now. We need to find a way to reduce the output of this uh, per voice instead. So two components we're gonna need here, we're gonna reduce the bit rate for one, uh, which is gonna be done using a quantizer. This may not be exactly the same as the emulator, but it's gonna get us pretty close to what that is doing. Essentially what we're doing now is we're reducing the bit rate of the audio here. And as I said, that's happening per voice now. And it's essentially like the sample was reduced before it went into all of the extra, um, you know, filters and envelopes that we have here. Now we need to find a way to actually reduce the sample rate. So the way that we're going to do this is you don't have a sample rate reduction within um, the grid, but we can use a sample and hold. 
So essentially now what we need to do is the way the sample hold works is pretty much the same as sampling works. Um, when you're recording the audio digitally, it's going to record a volume for each point, and that's going to be typically at 44.1 kilohertz. So 44.1 thousand samples um, per section like that. Uh, you can emulate that as well because we've got this running through 44.1 currently, but we want to rather have this sample and hold sample the volume that's coming in at 32,000. Um, that's going to be the highest we can go inside of the grid because of the way that we're going to do this. I'm going to bring in an LFO and we're going to have this set to a pulse and then let's go down here and set this to kilohertz and we'll go all the way up to 32 kilohertz and we're having the pulse from this LFO trigger our sample and hold. So it's now 32 Hurt, uh, 32 kilohertz instead of 44.1 that's coming out of the sampler. We can take a look at this. And let's reduce the rate of this LFO now. And then you get bit crushing. So let's go down to like 22 kilohertz. Now, what I said, you know, you can also add in stuff like filters, for example, and you'll notice the difference now is the filters, if we use, let's say, sound key, for example, uh, the filters are going to be post the processing or the reduction here. So this would be emulating a actual sample being put through a analog filter. And we can now maybe just use this to give us a little bit of emulation on that. I like to play around with pitching things down like this as well. Like I said, it's subtle, yeah, but this is more accurate than the way we were doing it before. Uh, let's just stick a reverb on this. This does also make it quite flexible now for adding different layers and stuff to do the sampling inside of... Um, uh, the grid like this, because we can just very simply, you know, duplicate these and then send this into a, uh, let's go to the mixer, for example. And now we've just got another layer on you. It's just samples we're playing around with here. Um, we can, it's, it's very quick and easy to kind of blend stuff together. Uh, and obviously you can go ahead and create additional modulation if you wanted to. Let's maybe just add in another LFO here to, in this case, modulate the pitch maybe for this one. And remember that because this is per voice as well, the effects that are available to you as well will also be applied per voice too. So if you've got uh, something like Chorus Plus, for example, this would be per voice too. So you could mess around with, you know, applying... There would be a slightly different effect than if you just applied this to the output effects uh, of a sampler channel.
so yeah cool um some cool ideas that you can play around with uh i i you know for the longest time didn't really use the sample as much inside of the grid but there's actually a lot that you can do um by sampling inside of polygrid like this instead of just using the the standard sampler so maybe some ideas to inspire you guys there i hope you enjoyed that and i'll catch you soon cheers Thank <laughs> you.